Welcome back to Beards and Brews. This week's review is John Wick. Gentlemen, John. what do we have to say about uh, Mr. Jonathan Wick? Uh, totally a movie that could have been forgettable. You know, just another toss it into the junk pile of action films. But holy shit, does John Wick deliver? This movie came completely out of left field. You're exactly right. It could have just been a whatever movie. But this has to be one of the best action movies to come out or just fall out of Hollywood in the past 10 years. See, my opinion was that it was just a whatever action movie. I watched it for the first time last night, and that's that's kind of how I felt about it. Welcome back to the Eric and Brady Show. This week's review is going to be on John Wick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a movie that we love, and apparently Baba Yaga has came and killed Chandler. Sorry, guys. No, no, okay, I, I'm super curious. What, what else do you have to say? It's just, all right, I get former hitman, he... Uh, these guys come in, steal his car, kill his puppy. Spoilers. Uh, that we're gonna get to that in like the first five minutes. Come on, guys. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Dialogue, nothing in this movie. So they amp up the the sound, the music to give oh, like yeah. a like a more dramatic vibe to it but dialogue means absolutely nothing and i'm a dialogue guy i love dialogue and to me this movie was just a a mindless stream of pow 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 all right i'm gonna kick you pow 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 all right i'm gonna stab you a little bit all right i'm gonna sneak around this wall pow 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 all right i'm gonna go to this other guy you know it was not my thing I okay. I, I absolutely understand that. Like you know, you you uh, your movie a couple weeks ago or forever ago now was uh, Snatch, and that's totally up your alley. And a movie where like Keanu Reeves is like, I know gun poo. Okay, yeah. I get, I get it. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. But on the same note, it's an action movie that is the natural evolution of action movies. This man, the work that he put in to becoming this character, is noteworthy on its own four months of training where he did five days a week eight hours a day i don't know if you guys have seen the viral videos i've watched him like a billion times where he's doing the three gun he's got his ar he's got a shotgun he's got his pistol uh he's doing all of his own stuff the brazilian jiu-jitsu stuff the judo the driving all the gunplay it's him he put in this work to make this character real and it is amazing Okay, guys, I'm going to go ahead and break something to you right now just before we get started, before we start going in with the plot and everything. i got to get something off my chest. I fucking hate Keanu Reeves. Like, I'm sure he's a great guy. I've heard nothing but being him being a great guy. uh, For for a second, I thought you had, like, an actual bombshell. Yeah, no, I get it. Like, he's totally a one-note actor. (laughs) He is, and that's why he keeps his mouth shut in this film. No, oh, that's what I, I was gonna so. say. This this movie does what like First Blood does. He has no explanation of himself. You learn everything yeah. from characters and situations around him. It's amazing. You don't need him to speak because one of my favorite movies of all time is Bram Stoker's Dracula. <laughs> uh, fucking hate Keanu Reeves. Oh man, I almost had a spit take. <laughs> Fuck I, him in that film. I know exactly what you're talking about. His um, surfer English accent. Yeah. <laughs> so you want to buy Carfax Abbey? Oh, uh, it's the man himself. He's grown young again. Anthony Hopkins, <laughs> Kelly Oldman, and here I am, doing a shit job. <laughs> he's definitely toned that down across his career, but like that's all I hear. That's that's it. I hear surfer vibe in The Matrix, surfer vibe in John Wick. It's it's just, that's who he is. Yeah, no. he can't get away from it. He's always going to be, you know, from Bill and Ted. I'm okay with that because the movie is smart enough to go, hey, Keanu Reeves, the hardest working man in Hollywood, you got it. You did this. This is who the fuck you are. Your entire legacy can be built around John Wick. If you guys haven't seen him, John Wick 1 through 3, each one fucking pumps up the volume in the best way. Go watch him. Keanu Reeves, I applaud you, sir. John Wick is fucking amazing. 
And I'll what? tell you, the volume in this one especially was pumped up. Because I couldn't hear a thing they were saying. <laughs> but then, that's what I want to talk about. Not necessarily the volume, but the strength that this movie pulls to is that three things. Pacing, escalation, and geography. Man, this action is beautifully panned out. There's no shaky cam. Hardly any CGI. There's little bits there like blood and stuff. But it just builds so perfectly. And every punch and every gunshot just feels really good. Because that man put in the work. They do a lot of those continuous one-shots where it's just Keanu going through three to five bad guys having the drawn out fights where the camera doesn't break away these guys have set down they uh, choreographed this whole fucking fight scene and these dudes knock it out of the park and don't get me wrong those were really fun to watch they really were every scene where there's sort of like a really well choreographed uh interaction between him and random bad guy number four like that was cool it was fun to watch but as an overall picture it was uh, you know, I think um, what I love about these movies the most is just how next to invincible Keanu Reeves is. It's really fun to see someone be put together piece by piece by the characters. You know, you learn little bits here and there of what he can do when he has done, and then just see him do it. You know, like he's a representative, it's almost like a, you know the boogeyman, almost like he's a fictional character. But then he, when he jumps into place, he whips so much ass, and it just feels really good as an action man. It really does. And getting to see those bits put together with the work that he put in, when he's using the gun and he's firing and he drops the magazine and reloads, hits the uh, slide release, it brings the next round home and he starts firing all over again. And then he holsters, you know, properly pulls out the AR, fucking fires it, drops a mag, reloads, sends the bolt home, starts shooting again. It's beautiful. And these are things that you don't get to see in action films these are the things that are ignored where you see the guy with a six shooter and he shoots 30 damn times yeah, yeah that's something uh we were watching last night me and my wife and that's something that my wife mentioned and gave a lot of respect to was the realism behind like all right you're not gonna have 30 ma uh, like uh 30 bullets in that clip you've got to reload and they do a good job of you know realistically reloading when it's time to reload. Oh yeah, yeah. They, they go they go a step further in the second one, which oh. I hope you at least give it a chance, but there's a scene where like um, John Wick only has seven rounds and they play that up and he counts every fucking one of them. It works out beautifully and they even give him a three gun shine spot where he goes through some tunnels and it's just the three gun that he practiced in the viral videos shown to you on the big screen and it's beautiful. Now that's in John Wick 2, not this one. He gets his own so, little moments to shine in this one also. So just to um, quickly go through it, everybody knows the premise of this movie. It's a little ridiculous. It's been memed to shit and back. But, you know, this guy, like Chandler said, former assassin. He gets out of the game because he just wants to live with his wife. His wife, unfortunately, passes away. Last little thing that she did was uh, gift him a puppy. So, you know, she knew she was dying. So when she did pass, he finally got it. So that was his, like, last bit of humanity, I guess. Uh, then these fucking Russian punks decide to... Um, uh, come to his house, steal his car, kill the dog, unfortunately, and they have no fucking clue of the can of worms that they just opened. The main Russian punk, by the way, played by uh, Alfie Allen, also known as Theon Greyjoy from Game of Thrones. Excuse me? Reek. It is Reek. <laughs> I, I, think he, I think we can call him Theon Greyjoy now. Right. Listen, you can't throw out no GOT spoilers ever, period end of fucking story. Oh, well, I'm calling him Theon through the whole thing, so we'll just have to roll with that, okay? Well, I'll Theon. just continue to call him Reek. So, I think it's really important to also throw in there that not only did they kill this dog, but that dog was his way to deal with the loss of his wife. Now, his wife didn't die in some gang shootout, anything crazy like that. She was killed by just a regular old, run-of-the-mill terminal illness. He lost her after getting out of the game breaks his heart she gets in the dog to help him cope because she doesn't want him going back into that lifestyle and these fuckers come and they kill his dog they put a fucking baseball bat through his wife's car's windshield douchebags 
And just because they really liked this car, they wanted to steal that car. I mean, it was but a nice car, but... Yeah. You couldn't sell yeah. it, so they're going to get it. That was a 1969 Ford Mustang Mach 1. That it was. And a it very was. rare silver and black paint job. Raiders Dude, color. I'm not a car guy, but holy shit, is that a nice car. There's something sexy about the uh, 69 Mustang. Those lines are just mm, good stuff. 69 Mustang? That is nice. Yeah. But um, just thinking back, like you, the premise is even done to death. I mean, I love revenge movies. This is definitely like a modern day Death Wish, which we might get to. That's a fun movie. But uh, Not the make. it doesn't exist. Anyways, <laughs> I, I don't know if I'd rather watch like Die Hard Five or something like that. Ugh, that's a shit show. Oh my god. We'll do like yeah. a shitty sequel month or something like that. Shit Timber. Wasn't that our first month? Yeah. What hey, is it? it was Tombstone, sir. You need to oh. shut your fucking mouth. Well, Critters Tomb- 2, Ghostbusters 2, Gremlins 2. <laughs> Back it the fuck up. You say Critters well, 2 is shitty again, I'm gonna fucking chop your legs off. Oh, no, I <laughs> my legs. I'm already short enough. Oh. <sighs> so, anyways, these uh, Russian fellas try to rough up Mr. John Wick without knowing he's John Wick. And, uh... Flips his switches, he's he's broken. Like he's just like, dude, it's enough. And he goes right back into the lifestyle. Um, starts calling up people, all his friends, trying to see what information he can pull together to see where his car is, and uh, who these dudes are. Yeah, uh, I think it's super neat that he loses his dog, and you're expecting there to be this grief period, this mourning period. No, it's no, click. There he is, there's in the dog in the fucking basement, digging up his old life, ready to go to war. And what they mention later in the movie is that he is 100% focused all the time. Now he's, uh, yeah. even though I said that Keanu is like a one-note actor, you have that little underlying tone of just like, I'm gonna fuck this whole thing up. And that's what's really nice. Yeah, and uh, he finds out that his car was taken to the chop shop. We get introduced to uh, John Leguizamo's character. And I don't know what it is, but over the years, I've grown very fond of Mr. Leguizamo. I oh, like yeah. the guy. Like, I uh, can't, like, pull him apart from, like, Sid the Sloth from Ice Age, but, you know, he's a really good actor. He no. was fun in Spawn, uh, as well oh, as his name. Great. He was great, great in Spawn. Dude. The Vibrator. The Violator. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty good. <laughs> uh, I like that John Leguizamo's character, knowing that this is the crime boss's son and all that, brought that car to his chop shop and he's like fuck that and he just punches dude in the face and says get that shit the fuck out of here because he yeah, ain't trying like, john wick yeah just like that dude said the fucking stones on that old man john wick goes there to find it out and i think it's beautiful that you expect john wick to show up in style but they want to keep grounding him as you know he is this boogeyman but he is still just a man he shows up on the fucking public bus well, I mean, cool. how else is he going to get there? They stole his car. They put a, a baseball bat through the other car. Like, what yeah, other options does he have? One of those, he's going to there? Where he goes and busts out a car thing, and he's like, turn yeah. the jack out or anything. Something cool. That, no, he just gets on the fucking bus. Oh, could you imagine he had, like, a Wickmobile or something like that? Just... JW on the hood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, the fucking kid's dad turns out to be this character named Bigo. He's the Russian crime boss. And when he finds out, he goes, Ooh. I heard you punched my kid. Calling Aurelio, because he's going to, you know, fuck Aurelio up. He's like, I heard you punch my kid. He goes, you want to tell me why? He goes, yeah, he brought John Wick's car to me. And he went, oh. And just hangs that, up the phone. <laughs> that, oh, is one of the greatest cinematic moments of all time. <laughs> like that fucking Vigo dude. He's just like this hardened fucking crime boss. And even just like the hint of John Wick, he's just like, fuck, oh, fuck. Shit. All right. Yeah. Evidently, he uh, he saw him kill three men in a bar with a pencil. Oh, I don't know fuck. how he did that. But. With pencil. a fucking pencil. <laughs> so did anyone else think that the lawyer guy was Mayhem from those auto insurance commercials? Yeah, I have totally to confirm is. 100% it is Mayhem. I looked it up, yeah. I was like, fuck, that's him with a weird accent. <laughs> no, I saw him immediately, and I was like, that's the dude from uh, fucking State Farm or whatever. Yeah, he's, just, he's a raccoon up in the attic. That's my favorite one. <laughs> he's just there to cover their insurance. That's beautiful. Uh, so, after that, Vigo tries to give him a call and calm him down and see if they can settle this in some way, shape, or form by giving him his uh, car back. 
I love that this crime boss <laughs> tries to give John Wick a courtesy call. It's, it made me laugh. It made me giggle. It's so good. I hey, love the response. Sorry for your inconvenience, but, you know, things happen. Yeah, he's like, hey, man, <laughs> how about you just let it go? I'll give you your car back. There is no answer from the other side, and John Wick just hangs up the phone, and then the Vigo character is like, uh, it's There just, it is. It's, it's fucking over. <laughs> and then I have written down in my notes, shit's getting serious. You can tell by the music. Absolutely. Because like, he even pulls his son in. He's like, hey, son, come and have a drink. He's like, okay, sure, Pops. He's like, oh, you're my son. <laughs> just like, just nails him in the gut. Yeah, he has him take a shot and then punches him in the gut while he's swallowing it so he vomits it out. <laughs> it's so <laughs> fucked up. Red Foreman, dumbass. Yeah, absolutely. He just had to put a foot in his ass. Like, do you realize what you just fucking did? You fucked not only yourself, not only me, but the whole organization. And he's going to chew through everybody to get to us. It's a beautiful scene just showing how serious this is. So he sends, like, what is it, a 12-man hit team to John's it house. It almost reminds me of, um, uh, what's his name's bit from uh, Leon? Which is like, send everyone. Who? Everyone! <laughs> yes. Oh, man, we got to do Leon. I fucking love that film, too. So these guys come, and we get our first taste of John Wick in John Wick mode. The guys come sneaking in the house. They have their uh, black baklavas on. They have their weapons. They, they seem trained. They're skilled. They're sneaking in. And John's just waiting. And we get just a fucking mantage of gun foo <laughs> yeah. exactly There's, that's exactly what it is it's a mantage of gun foo i need that on a t-shirt right now gun foo mantage yeah just like a mustache of guns and the choreography through this again is really neat i like like it's really fun to watch it's a ride uh, it's definitely a ride yeah they do a lot of really cool angle shots to where you see John in the shot, then the uh, the villain enters, and then he gets, you know, the encounter started with two to three guys, and there's always a moment of where you're like, oh, this dude's going to get John, and then he comes out of it some way, shape, or form. It's so fun to watch each little set piece unfold. The lighting for these is really good. The angles is really good. Well, that's what I mentioned earlier, the whole geography thing. When oh. they have those little setups and payoffs, you yourself as an audience member, you have a little sense of how the house is laid out just before the action happens. So when shit's about to go down, you kind of have a feel for everything. So when it does, it feels good. See, to me, going back to the... Uh, uh, <clears throat> sorry. To me, it was like I never had this sense of danger. I never had the sense of thought that, oh, here's where John Wick gets it. Because I know that there's still, you know, an hour and ten minutes left of this movie. So, like, I, I never have any fear that one of these bullets is, is going to be the one that does John Wick end. Or, you know, somebody's going to stab John Wick and that's just going to be the end of it. All of these guys are just fodder for John Wick. And I never had any other thoughts otherwise. Well, duh. But it's, it's still that intense... Because they're not afraid, and that's something cool in the John Wick movies. They're not afraid to get John Wick hurt. He'll get shot. He'll get hit by a vehicle. He'll get hurt. There were things Many that hit him. <laughs> oh, yeah. In the second one, now, if you guys ever get to watch the second one, that, to me, was the only scene that was like, ah, come on now. But he but, kills um, guys. No fucking problem. John Wick goes John Wick mode. To even try to describe this choreography is ridiculous. He's got people wrapped in his legs after hip tosses, holding an arm and an arm bar while he's hooking their head up with his foot so he can blow their face off. It's fucking nuts. It's all very Rey Mysterio Jr. <laughs> Maybe Dean Malenko? I don't know which reference you want to go with here. I like the Dean Malenko. Okay. Man of a thousand holds. I still think the action works, even though, like, um, you said that, uh, you know, he was a little bit too invincible, he didn't fear for anything. I don't think that's the point. I think it's just the ride, like you said earlier, because, yeah. the, the like, the meat and potatoes of this movie is just, like, the first third is just the build-up, like, the dominoes being set up, and then when the shit hits the fan, you just flick them all down. So, that was just, like, the payoff. Like, the, the action from, like, the middle of the movie to the end, which is almost non-stop, is just, like, the big fucking payoff, just... Blowing a huge load. 
it's definitely a ride, a roller coaster in that there's that endorphin rush, but you, you know you're still safe. You're on a ride, but you know nothing's really going to happen that's going to you know, kill John Wick or anything. But there's still that sort of energy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I was never afraid John Wick was going to die, but I'm just there to watch. It's, it's, it's fun to see. It's a good time. So the next <laughs> bit we get is uh, John shows up at the Continental and that's a really, really cool thing. Uh, the Continental is basically headquarters. It's like a giant hotel for the criminal underworld. Which, which happens is... to be in the Flatiron Building in New York City, by the way, if anyone's interested. Well, I mean, it was either that or that's where Spider-Man worked at the Daily Bugle, so... That's the 14th floor. Parker, get in here! I need pictures of that Spider-Man. <laughs> while you're at it. So while John's there, Vigo uh, puts a bounty on him for four million and goes and talks to his mentor, Willem Dafoe. Willem, Willem Dafoe. But this time he's like a Willem de friend, so it's not too bad. I see what you did there, and that's kind of cute. I like it. That's adorable. <laughs> I'm a baby Seth. And then at uh, after this, uh, you can tell it's getting serious because of the music. Oh yeah. <laughs> Is that, that a... like your next fourteen notes? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, just I, quick put. Music. I've had that several times. You can tell it's getting serious because of the music. Uh, we get introduced to a character known as Winston. He runs the Continental. You get the concierge character, and he's a lot of fun. Oh yeah. Uh, he tells John Wick where to find Reek at the Red Circle uh, bar downtown, with a lot of bodyguards. And what's good about the whole Continental thing is that they don't dive too deep into it yet. It's just enough to kind of get that little, like, Oort cloud of, uh, you know, the universe. So, like, what's going on in the background? Yeah, it's it's definitely world-building with the Continental, like, the way they describe it. It's just a hub for all the criminal underground. You can't do business there. So that means, like, you can't kill someone on the ground. You can't do anything negative that would draw attention to the Continental at the Continental. If you do your membership and they basically kill you it's kind of like honor among assassins that kind of thing yeah, yeah i was actually more interested in the continental and like everything involving that than most everything else happened with the characters that are in this movie like that seemed like a really interesting idea and i think there's another movie that came out not long ago that has sort of the same idea it's but called that's... john wick chapter two yeah. oh okay and three soon to be four and a couple spin-off movies and maybe a crossover with Atomic Blonde. Ugh. Yeah, same. So, he goes to the Red Circle to get Reek. And we get introduced to uh, Bodyguard, one of my favorite guys out there. We mentioned Dean Malenko, we mentioned Rey Mysterio. Well, it just so turns out that big sexy Kevin Nash is the dude working the door. <laughs> Was that really? Yeah. He's old now, but he's still I the same guy. He's still big and sexy. <laughs> yeah. He, what fucking was Kevin Nash? According to IMDb. I didn't even notice that. Shit. Well, that breaks my heart because he's like, thank you, Mr. Vic. And he wanders <laughs> off. Yeah, he's like, take he goes the night off, off. He gets his cookie. <laughs> but now we are treated to my favorite scene in this entire fucking film. Where he breaks into this bar and... In the background, you can hear uh, music playing. Now, the the background music is very faint, but as he gets closer and closer to the target, the music becomes clearer and clearer and louder and louder. And it's a song. I'm probably going to butcher the name of this. Uh, it's Kaleida or Kalada, and it's called oh, yeah. Think. And the lighting for this is fucking amazing. And the song is fucking amazing. One thing I'll say, this soundtrack had a lot of really good, a real, a lot of really good um, songs that fit the moment very well. There's a lot of good trip hop and uh, some bangers, really, some bangers. Bam! There's, yeah. There's a good bit of just like wubba lubba dub dub in there. So. Yeah, I'm into it. I liked it. But that song, I fucking loved it. I downloaded it. I, I'm a big fan of it. I have it on some playlists. But there's a scene where he kills a man with a knife and he covers his mouth and he stabs him like in the throat slash tongue area 
and he's bleeding him out, but he looks in him like directly in his fucking eyes while he's going down the wall. And John Wick's got some sweat coming down his face, and you can see there's like some intensity, there's a struggle there. And it's just a really personal kill. And it's really kind of cool, especially set to that song. And then, again, the kill Taj starts, and he starts trying to kill Reek and all his bodyguards. As someone who once played Devil's Advocate, he probably had a penance stare or something. Because they get the fake Al Pacino in there as Winston. Oh, yeah. Oh, for a second, I thought you meant like Winston from Ghostbuster. Just, hooah, guys, I'm here. <laughs> your, your Pacino is not bad. <laughs> So this next scene to me feels very Max Payne. Did you guys ever play Max Payne? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. It felt Third very much too. like straight out of the game Max Payne. And, and not like, as the not movie Max game. Payne with uh, say hi to your mother for me and Mark Wahlberg. Oh, did, did they make a movie of that? That sounds terrible. It's we'll see if that for shit timber. Horrible. But yeah, he's just running around stealthily and then not so stealthily just killing people, shooting people up. Uh, killing all the bodyguards and whatever, trying to get to Theon Greyjoy. Yeah, there's a scene where he gets tossed off the balcony and he lands on his own gun because it's, you know, <laughs> tucked into his back. And the funny thing is, is as he's getting up, he's like, Ugh! showing that it just, it sucked really bad to a fall. I feel like that's something they figured out, like, on the fly when they're shooting. those like, wouldn't he land on his gun? Yeah, you're right. Hang on. Oh, fuck. My back. I was going to say, so before we leave this bar, you guys want to have a drink? Oh, fucking A. Dang, right. dude. What do you got brewing up over there? Today I've got New Belgium Brewing Company's Voodoo Ranger Juicifer IPA. Pretty big brewery out of Colorado. I think they've also got a, a side brewery in, I want to say, North Carolina somewhere. They have a series called the Voodoo Ranger. It's a series of different IPAs, different styles of IPA. Okay. And this particular one is called the Juicifer IPA. Damn. Is it yeah. is it like to honor Pucifer with Maynard James Keenan? I don't I don't think so. No. Is it just a devil of a good time? It does have a nice little uh, trident pitchfork on the front. It's got a cute little can, but it's pretty good. It's really juicy, really hop forward IPA, seven point seven percent ABV. So you don't need too many of them. Really uh, mango and grapefruit. Really solid. Honestly, I, I like it quite a bit. I might have several more. Several. I, I Again, I just had scotch today, and I am I can just keep saying that I don't like the way scotch tastes, but by God, I'll drink it. Might not we'll like how it tastes, but it's really fun to say. Scotch. Scotch. Scotchy, mm, scotch, 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 scotch. Kind of the kind of drink that makes you think of your father. <laughs> Mom, my father. So he gets back and uh, he's getting patched up and we get introduced to one of the characters, Mrs. Perkins. And her name as an actress escapes me, but she is super attractive in this role to me, at least. I just have her written down throughout the script, throughout my notes as hot girl. Jeez, once you go... You're not nice when you're sober. <laughs> masculate somewhere else. You man. So she shows up because there's a $4 million bounty on his head to do business at the Continental. And at the same time, Willem Dafoe's got him in his sights of a sniper rifle across the street. He too is getting ready to shoot him. And then he has like a little change of heart. Shoots the pillow next to him and alerts him that Perkins is in the room. There's a big knockdown drag out fight between him and Perkins. Now, do we know that there was a change of heart, or maybe Willem Dafoe was there to protect them all along? You know what? Mm -hmm. he maybe he be... was like, you know what? I know there's going to be people coming after John Wick. I better keep an eye on him. That would be 100% true. For some reason, I just thought he was just like, ah, Spider Man! <laughs> yeah, he's up there. The Green Goblin's ready to kill. That's what he does. And then the Marilyn Manson, the Kelly and Strange Eyes. That wasn't a bad song to be in there. Yeah, it, uh, it really wasn't. Like, new Marilyn Manson, I think, is generally pretty terrible, but, you know, <laughs> it was all right for the for the context. So there's a big knockdown drag out between him and Perkins. Uh, he gets the upper hand, learns some, you know, information about where uh, they are moving Reek. 
then he fucking pussies out. Well, no, no, he doesn't pussy out. He doesn't kill her because he can't do business on continental grounds. He's a oh, rule right. But she winds so, up fucking up anyway, so... Oh, yeah. What ifs? We get introduced to another character named Harry. Apparently there's a backstory between him and John. You don't really get to go into it. It's kind of a waste of a character. Uh, it's, John, it's just uh, enough to keep the, like, you know, the gears kind of lubed up. You just kind of keep it going. Like, that yeah. little bit of information. Which I'm fine with. Yeah. Is little that little the, uh, punch out position. Is that the, the guy that he more or less gives Perkins to? It's like, catch and release? Yes. Yeah, that yeah. that scene I actually really like. It was so dry between the two. It was like, yeah, you're back in the game. Yeah, I don't even know what he says there, but it's so like business as usual kind of thing between the two. Yeah. It almost makes you miss Jim Brown, huh? Yeah. Oh, that could have been Jim Brown. It could have been Jim Brown. <laughs> Another payday for Jim Brown. <laughs> Missed <the> opportunities <laughs> out there, Jim Brown. You gave up pork. Wow. <laughs> Damn, Jack Nicholson's good in that role. So, he gets uh, the information, and he heads to this Russian church money laundering place. And there is no nonsense from the time he walks in at he all. just walks in, starts shooting up the place, starts dealing with the priest or whatever they have in an Orthodox church. Um, and uh, just heads straight downstairs to the vault, I guess. Yeah, he shoots the dude in the leg and leaves him because he knows. He fucking knows what's going to happen. Right. Yeah, he goes down to the one to tell the story, that's all. Oh, oh Mickey and Mallory. You always got to leave somebody to tell the tale. Yeah. And then there's more serious music. That's how, you know, shit's about to go down. Oh, yeah. Uh, he goes, burns up all of Vigo's, you know, money that he's laundered, the uh, blackmail evidence he's had, all of his good shit. He's basically destroying it knowing that he's going to come and check it out. So he's basically laying a trap. Yeah, I think the people guarding the vault were like, this guy's just coming in to steal our shit or whatever, but I feel like burning everything is a whole lot more effective for the storytelling than just, I mean, what what's a guy who's already very well off going to do with money and information? He's yeah, better it's better off little, burning it. it. You know, it shakes things up a little bit, because we know like what John Wick can do. He can just kill everybody fancily, so let's you know, put a little bit more oomph into it. It's very the Joker burning that pile of cash. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay, well, uh, so John lays the trap, and of course Vigo has to bite. He shows up with some of his top, you know, muscle, and again, boom, straight in the action. John's got his AR out there, and you get some more beautiful gunplay with, you know, you get to see him shooting, reloading. He does a few uh, tactical switches from car to car. Uh, just when you think he's getting the upper hand, a car comes in, hits another SUV, causing it to sideswipe him, knocking him out. He just gets booped out of the way. Just a little yeah. bit. And this is the uh, first and I think only time in the movie where he gets a little bit of uh, humanized in the ways of like, you know, in the terms of John Wick. Because he gets um, tied to a chair and then they, you know, try to interrogate him kind of. <laughs> yeah, very Bond villain moment. Ooh, yeah. It'll be like Casino Royale, and they just bust his nuts all over the place. Good God, that scene was so fucking hard to watch. Big oof. Daniel Craig. Casino oof. I mean, it was just a really creative scene. Like, take a wicker chair, take the wicker out, and fucking smack him in the balls with a fucking ball of rope. That's all you needed. It's such a, like... It's such a bastard of a torture scene, too. Damn. Yeah, because whenever I remember watching that scene, I was like, who the fuck would have thought of that? He, he has somebody who's probably done some worse shit in his life, that too. Fucking Mads Mickelson. Yeah. Ugh. Trickster. So, this is where we get Vigo kind of pulling a Bond move. He gives some exposition, talks to him, John talks back, and basically explains why he can't let this go. And they put a bag over his head. And again, you're like, uh-oh, it's over. This is it. John Wick's gonna die. Good old Except Green Goblin. Willem Dafoe! Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we've got Willem Dafoe up on, I guess, a different uh, building rooftop. He just likes to hang rifle. out up there with the sniper yeah. rifle. Yeah, <laughs> That's what he's out for his dude. His green goblin glider gets him from rooftop to rooftop easily. <laughs> oh, that it is okay. So, uh, 
Willem Dafoe shoots one of these guys and uh, John Wick has a pretty easy time dealing with the other guy. There's a little bit of a fight scene, another uh, sort of arm bar choke cold sleeper thing that he puts him in, but he, he eventually just deals with him pretty outright. That sounds like you knew exactly what you were talking about. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I do. And Vigo's trying to make a break for it. John grabs a fucking shotgun, runs outside, jumps on the hood of his getaway car, and just one shot, bam, shoots the fucking... Then how he gets down from the SUV is great. He just fucking drops onto his shoulder and rolls off. Just thump. And the dude is, or Vigo, so scared shitless. Like, he's like, shit, shit. With his hands up. Yeah, he knows it's over. And they, they come to like an uneasy truce because Vigo gives up Reek. Gives up his son. Well, he tells them where he's at. He's like, you know, they're gonna they're gonna know that you're coming. And he's John like, Wick's I, just like, of course, it's not gonna matter though, because I'm fucking John Wick. And I like the sunset. Yeah, I like the generational thing they try to do here too, because you got Reek and his set of bodyguards. And his set of bodyguards are doing what most 20-somethings would be doing. Yeah, oh, man, we're hiding out. Let's play fucking video games. Oh. But before you get into this, what you do get is some really sweet trip-hop again. Just a banger. It's, uh, it really sets the scene. I'm into it. But the music gets serious, so you know shit's going to happen. Yeah, it gets serious, <laughs> but it gets hard. <laughs> And John starts killing all these guards again, as usual. But there's one <laughs> in particular where he's playing video games. He's got the headset on. You know, he's on there. He's like, Call of Duty. He's like, I'm shooting noobs. He shoots him through the fucking head, through the headset. It's a fucking cool scene. Just, bop, and he's dead as shit playing Halo or Call of Duty or whatever it was. The last headshot he ever got. Ooh. Achievement Ripping. unlocked. He finally gets his revenge on Reek to where he gets to kill him and this is something that you would think that John Wick would draw out he would have some things to say he would want to know why but John Wick as the boogeyman as Baba fucking Yaga doesn't give a shit he shoots him in the gut to get him to stop running and as soon as he sits down he gets up close shoots him in the face walks the fuck away business is done that's one of the points I wanted to bring up. He's just like any other henchman that he put down in this movie. He's just, it's just over. He just puts him down. There's no like dramatic like upheaval or anything. Like you said, he just like shoots him in the face and it's done. Yeah, it's just fucking over. Poor Theon Greyjoy. Uh, after that, we're going to get a little bit more of the story going on because Perkins, who has escaped from being held hostage, tells uh, Vigo that Marcus helped John. So, knowing that his son is killed and still just being spiteful, he wants to hurt John, so him and Perkins go and kill Marcus. A.K.A. But, but they did that on continental grounds, so you know what that means. Tisk tisk, shame on you. Oh, no, no, they didn't kill Marcus on continental grounds. They killed him oh, in his home. Oh, that's right. That's all right. They killed the other guy. Yeah. Not uh, Jim Brown. Poor Jim Brown. Yeah, and so for her doing that, uh, Winston has a hit squad out looking for her, and Vigo calls John and basically threatens him because he's expecting Perkins to be there to ambush and save him. But when Perkins is setting up, Winston's like, hey, yo. And she's like, what? <laughs> and she gets like multiple hey, foreheads. Hey, yo. Are you sure that wasn't Kevin Nash from earlier? Hey, yo. No, that's Scott Hall. That's yeah. his partner, the Outsiders. No, I thought you were doing like a Sylvester World. Stallone. Uh, and then, you know, he kills her with the quad head shots and then yeah. lets John know Vigo's location. And through all of that, the music is so much louder than any dialogue. Like, <laughs> so much louder. It's like I try and turn the volume up, but it doesn't help at all. Good old John Whisper. What'd he say? <laughs> turn it up. <laughs> uh oh, it's serious. Are you just gonna stand there? Are you gonna hand me a gun? <laughs> Pop quiz, hot show. Yeah, my my neighbors are thinking that I'm having a house party, but really I'm just trying to hear what these guys are saying. So there's a super cool car scene. There's some 
you know, silly, you know, silly little shooting stuff. Uh, Mayhem gets killed in a very amusing way. Mayhem's got a few little funny lines in the back seat when he's like, "I'm gonna kill this dude," and the Vigo's like, "Oh yeah, you think you can? Here you go." Gives him a pistol. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, "Have at it." Good job, go on, kid. He and just like, taps him on the behind, lets him go. Yeah, and then John yeah, fucking dude. whips his car sideways and smacks him with it and knocks him through the windshield. <laughs> John shoots him in the face while he's hanging through the windshield. <laughs> Imagine getting, like, bitch slapped by a car. Like, a whole car. (laughs) After that, there's a really cool showdown moment between Vigo and uh, John. And And there's, like, lightning. Oh, yeah, it's the classic on top of a mountain, you know, in the rain fight scene. Almost like, you know, some Olympus shit. This was definitely a very video game for me. This was the boss fight. Yeah, definitely the boss fight. But the thing is, like, your John Wick character's been over-leveled for the past, like, 50 hours, and there's oh, no way he's getting out of You put in cheat codes in the fucking start of the game. What are you talking about? <laughs> no clip. Straight to the end. Yeah, just whatever. Here we go. Let's do it. Uh, but there's a, there's a cool scene where he, like, pulls the knife into himself so he can get the upper hand fighting Vigo. That just shows, like, how great of a fighter he is. You know, he just takes one for the team. Team Wick, that is, just so he can just win. He would do anything to finish yeah. this guy off. I'm, I'm gonna have to get stabbed, but in doing so, I'm gonna fuck you up. And th- th- they they utter a line to each other that keeps reverberating through the John Wick uh, series, the franchise. Be seeing you, yeah. Yeah, Be just se- like I, after the fight's over or whatever, you know, you've got a knife sticking out of uh, Vigo's shoulder. And they both just sat there like, all right, I guess we're done now. Be seeing you, John. Yep. See you later. I think it's great. So then John goes and gets him a new puppy to start the whole process over. This fucking movie is so good. And I'm, I hate that you didn't like it, Chandler, but I can respect your opinion. Yeah. I fucking love it. I think, it, like I mentioned at the very beginning, this is one of the best action pictures to fall out of Hollywood in the past decade or so. It's very tight. Very exhilarating, very well done, and it just makes for a great viewing experience. Like I can tell you the things that I liked about this movie, and the things that I liked, I liked a lot. The action scenes were very fun to watch. Um, there just wasn't a whole lot of depth there. The music, this soundtrack, the score was awesome. It was very loud, but it was awesome. I enjoyed every time they were playing music in the movie. It fit the scene very well. I was into it the whole time. Um, But as far as the overall uh, sort of plot from A to B, I I could do without it. Do you think this movie was a little ruined by how much we hyped it up? It might have been, honestly. Ah, bunch of baloney. I mean, I did talk a big game about this movie. Yeah, me too. (laughs) <laughs> but also, you guys know, this isn't necessarily my kind of movie anyway. Yeah, I'm, you're not the 80s action guy. That's, that's not definitely at all. where I'm at. And this is the natural evolution of what yes. I love. Well, that was John Wick, everybody. A movie that uh, I love very much. And uh, even though that uh, Chandler, you may not agree with this 100%, um, I'm glad you watched it with us. Try to expand your action palette. Um, you can find us in the links below. All of our social media is there, right down there. Yeah, you can get us on the Twitters. You can get us on the Facey books. And make sure you hit that subscribe button and click that bell so you know when we've got another one of these brewing. And if you've seen John Wick, let us know what you thought about it. Right down there in the comments. Until next week, goodbye. <laughs>